All right, and we are back with the Great Villain Podcast. I am Justin. That's my boy DJ. Here again. Week number two, well, week number three coming up now. Week number two is in the books. Is that a week that you want to remember or forget? Mm. Because I'm kind of just like, I'm over it. I'm over it. They played better ball against Cleveland and even the first game against the Cubs and then yesterday's well, the first game of last week was the last game of the Angels series against uh, Tungsten Arm O'Doyle. He did, you know, O'Doyle played pretty well, though, you know, a lot more like um, an early day Randy pitcher. Randy Johnson, sorry. Yeah. And, you know, being a couple guys, it's fine. <laughs> you know, when you're that good, you can... And you can be effectively wild, right? Because nobody really knows where the ball is going. They just know generally you're going to throw strikes. And when you're you're in the zone just enough, it works out okay. It wasn't his best performance by far, but he did yeah. actually end up dominating yesterday. So Future Mariner there. Looking forward to it, Tungsten Future Arm. Future Mariner in 2024. <laughs> in that first game, uh, or the last game of the Angels series, uh, we had Flex in. He's, he started... A lot better start, that start, than he did uh, yesterday. He went five innings, two runs. You know, the top of the lineup really has begun to start turning it around, starting with that game. You've seen the players that were hitting in spring training have carried over. Yeah. France was hitting, Suarez was hitting, J-Rod was hitting, right? Cowboy. Cowboy. All those four that were hitting continued hitting. Struggled in spring. Tom Murphy, Colton Wong. Shocker. Yeah. J.P. Crawford. J.P. Crawford. Although Crawford has cut down his home run swing in half. Actually, over the last week, I've noticed him doing more of a line drive instead of like, I'm going to hit 30 home runs that I can never hit instead of 30 pop-ups to the right fielder. Well, you know, he's definitely not hitting home runs when he's trying to bunt, which, uh, yeah, just bad. So, uh, France Suarez, they keep doing it. They powered the Mariners to a total of three runs. Woo! in that Angels game and just kind of a letdown that last game. Then we go on the road, well, to our favorite place, punching yourself in the face. As my son calls Cleveland, uh, hell. He says, if you go to Ohio, you're going to hell. Yeah. First game, Logan Gilbert, not so, didn't look so hot. Four innings, three earned. Um, Central command. Command, he said he was losing his mechanics. That's why he was losing velocity throughout the game. But this was also the beginning of bullpen attrition. We're getting too many innings on our bullpen. Bullpen, though, looked good. Five innings. Five innings, One seven walk, Ks. seven Ks. Yeah. One hit. I mean, yeah, looking good when you don't have to rely on them for you know multiple games in a row. But this was just the beginning. Because right after Andres Munoz hits the injured I list, I think that it's early in the season and that they want to put him on the injured list rather than try and try and go day to day and on top of that it's proven that we really needed to put him on the injured list because if we hadn't you know he would have not had arms available not like it really mattered that much because they kind of (laughs) suck yeah you know that that bullpen pitching depth that everybody says you have major leaguers and the minor leaguers no you never have enough pitching depth and that's but you're also you also can't pay for all of it. You just kind of have to hope that the AAA guys kind of just are able to work for you. And yeah, you know I mean, the, those quad ga- those quad A guys come up and have a good season. I mean, uh, there's a reason why these guys didn't make the opening day roster. JB B- Bukowskis and Justin Topa and well, there's a reason they were DFA'd or <laughs> traded for cash. I mean, we gave up nothing to get these guys. Yeah, and yeah that's because they're nothing. They're, they are replacement level. So we eked out a win, though, so that was good. Eked out a win, 5-3, first game of Cleveland series. And screw Cleveland because we killed it on well, their the, uh, opening day. The thing I liked best is that we finally took Savali for what Savali was, right? We The first time Savali faced us, He's just like, I'm just going to pitch, and you're going to swing at whatever I throw. Kind of rocked you to sleep, I guess. And then this game uh, got more back at it, more patience, put the ball in play harder versus Savali. I think the other problem with Savali's first start is uh, he kept everything low and on the ground. We could never lift anything. So this time we were able to put a little more balls in the air, harder hit. And yeah, well, you, you know, gotta... Savali ended up on the injured list. 
Jesus, there's um, another two pitchers ended up on the injured list this morning, I saw. Ian Anderson's going to have Tommy John surgery. Uh, Tim Anderson was put on the injured list for a couple weeks with a sprained knee. Uh, not a pitcher, but still an injury. Brandon Woodruff has uh, shoulder inflammation. Oof. Like, yeah, That's the bad. dreaded shoulder inflammation. Shoulder. You don't want shoulder as a pitcher. That Shoulders in baseball are as worse as Tommy John was 40 years ago. It's way yeah. behind the time, so shoulders are bad. Yeah, there's just a, a lot of pitcher attrition going on right now. Texas Odorizzi, you know, they trade, Texas traded for him over the offseason. Then he tweaked his shoulder during winter workouts and hasn't pitched at all for him, and he's going to be out all season. The Mariners are at a better spot with what we thought we were going to have available and where we are, but yeah, we'll see. I mean, when Flexen pitches and Marco pitches not very well, they're pretty much as bad as any AAA fodder that you're going to find. But Marco did not pitch bad in his game at Cleveland. Five and two-thirds, one earned. And that he, was a very much walk the balancing line. This is what yeah. you're hoping for from Marco. You know, he, he walked four, he gave up like six hits, got you there. But it was always like... It always will be. It that's always just will, what he is. It is what Marco is. But that's your, your fifth starter. But if he can get you into the sixth, you're going to take it every day of the week. You should, because look at some of these other teams' fifth starters. Uh, it's not very good. I mean, that's what we ran up against yesterday in Chicago. We we each we faced off with fifth starters, <laughs> and it wasn't a pretty game when the wind blows out in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> but before we get to there, we have a third game in Cleveland, where just this uh, this is where the attrition <laughs> is the happening, yeah. um, because we just couldn't couldn't put it away. Went 12 innings. We yeah, lost I mean, 7 I, to 6. I did like our offense. Our offense twice gave the bullpen a chance to close it out in extras. Scored both times, 10th and 11th. Didn't score in the 12th, but they had the opportunities. No, we did score. We missed in the 11th. We scored in the 10th. We scored in the, in the 12th. 12th. Okay. Yeah, it's just uh, how the how everything was working. I mean, we just didn't have any pitching Left of where? No, I mean they already said that it was going to be a position player had he gone another inning. So we, had, I mean that was the day Kirby went six, and all of a sudden the bullpen still got to cover six innings. Well, you know when you already had guys that were unavailable, like Seawald wasn't really available because he had pitched the day before. So I mean even Penn Murphy, who they said before the game was unavailable, pitched. The the real problem here with the bullpen is not only the injury to Munoz, but it's the fact that Dio Castillo. He's been trash. He has not been good at all. I haven't really been a fan. I was a little shocked that he did not get non-tendered this offseason. Uh, I was also really interested in trading him. If you know, if you're going to trade someone out of the bullpen, that's who I would have dealt. I, th- I think the problem was is they were trying to. Dio Castillo was on a controlled basis right you know makes three million or something if you would have gone out on the market to replace a castillo it would have cost twice that so yeah hoping to roll with castillo for one more year get some decent results out of it and then cut ties because he wasn't gonna be back next year of arbitration unlikely it yeah his unlikely. number was gonna start getting too high and you, you may weren't as well gonna just pay go him five or six million you would have just gone out on the market and spent five or six million you can get a better guy probably i mean they're relievers they're volatile but yeah, I wouldn't be interested in spending the five, six million dollars necessary to keep Diego Castillo. I was thinking during this off season that if you needed to save a few million dollars, that was a guy that you would cut. But well, it turns out saving money for what? I don't yeah, know. future yeah. earnings of Shohei Otani. Yeah. So we just missed the sweep there in Cleveland. Lost the season series to Cleveland. That's Which is over. really weird that we've already. Finished. I don't like that at all, but I don't like I really don't like it with a balanced schedule that we have. I would understand it more in an imbalanced schedule because well yeah, I mean you only get so many opportunities to play and so that would be it. But it just seems weird that the you're season is done. already you're over twelve with them. games in or you were no ten games in yeah. and you're done with them. They're very similar and it's probably a good chance we could see them later in the year in the playoffs. They're they still have no power in that lineup. Josh Bell sucks. Oh my God, Josh Bell sucks. This, there, there are folks who wanted Josh Bell. He is so bad, or at least he looks bad right now. 
It's a small sample, the early season, but he just doesn't he doesn't play good enough defense to to, to make first. up for his lack of offense. And he does his swing looks funky. Uh, he doesn't look comfortable up there. He did get the walk off win, the walk off base hit to win that last game, but that was after going like over six for the rest of the game. Yeah, and it's not like it was a big power hit either. No, it was, it was a dribbler. Dribbler that Colt Wong just couldn't get to the home end for. Yeah, Josh Bell, two years, uh, was it twenty seven million? I think is what he it's got. Something very so close to that. And the. It's really a one year with an opt out for this uh, um, mutual. Yeah. No, it's a player option oh, for the second option. year. But that shows you just how much value he was commanding in free agency that Cleveland could give him a really cheap deal to end up with nothing really. He was uh, he looked really awful. I mean, it, if that's the case, if that's what the Mariners were going to spend their money on, then just well, save he's going to be an Indian because there's no way he's getting seven more than seventeen million on the free agent market next year. Oh, it was 16 and a 16 half? and a half, yeah. Per, yeah, so, okay, so, so it's two, two year 33. Yeah. That's he's, a, not, he's not getting more than 17 on the market. Cleveland kind of screwed themselves up because they gave him a contract. He can opt out, but he's not going to opt out unless he was actually good. But, like, what's the chances even, of him being good? Even so, if he was good, I mean, maybe get why, a, a why, contract why do a couple two-year year. Deal? Why even go there? Just a one-year contract. Is he like, oh, I'm not going to sign in Cleveland if it's only for one year. It's like, well, well who fine. else was giving you money? <laughs> fine, dude. You suck. Like, I only want you for one year at most. And if you're good, I don't want you to come back. I mean, well, I mean, I do, but eh, eh. What's the chances of repeating that? I mean, okay, so best case scenario is he's a DH, right? Because he can't really play first base. We've That's already like. seen DHs are not making more than seventeen million, so there's no chance he's opting out of this. Even, I mean, I guess he could get a maybe a couple of years, but he is already going to be, you know, going into his mid thirties. So it's not like someone's going to be like, "Hey, Josh Bell, take a four year deal." Not unless they thought he, he, they were getting the Josh Bell when he was with the Pirates, <laughs> when he had some power. But so did everybody because they were using Super Bowls back then. <laughs> He has no pop in his bat. I don't see the attraction. I'm happy we dodged that bullet. Landmine. I don't think that's going to work out real well for Cleveland. I think they're already hurting. I mean, can you imagine what people would be thinking if Josh Bell was in our lineup? That was our big fish that we landed. Ooh, There'd a lot be of like, hate. Yeah. There'd be a it, lot of hate. Instead of it being like, oh, well, we didn't spend money. It's like, oh, well, at least we did spend money on that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really how we ought to be looking at this. There's some stuff that you can regret, but, you know, there's a lot of landmines out there. I want everyone to just keep score for yourself on what it is that uh, you wanted and, you know, maybe consider that you, sh- you maybe you don't want those things that you thought were, like, good investments at the time. So moving on to Chicago, where they have a couple players that folks also wanted us to invest in, uh, namely Dansby Swanson, Seiya Suzuki. Suzuki's hurt. Uh, you know, big shock big there. Shock, he missed uh, like 50 games last year. He's already missing games so far this year. Dansby Swanson had no chance of coming to Seattle, as we've discussed uh, in the past, where his wife plays for the female soccer team there in Chicago, whatever they are. I, I'm not a... I, I'm not a big fan of chick soccer. What about Sorry. chick basketball? No, nope. like that. Don't give a shit about that either. <laughs> Brittany Griner could have stayed in Russia. You, you didn't shit. watch the WNBA draft? Oh yeah, I heard that was a big thing. <laughs> or I saw it. I went to ESPN. It was on the front page. I'm like, what's happening? Oh yeah, okay. Just click, click, <laughs> click right by it. Um, but what what is happening in Chicago and Chicago land is Luis Castillo. Is still pretty good. Still pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, he did not get to that uh, Felix inning limit to break the Felix record of scoreless innings to start the, fir- the season. But still pretty good. He had one rough inning. Other than that, allowed, I think, less base runners in the other five innings than he did in that one inning. He just had a hiccup of an inning. So gave you six innings, two runs, and he kind of had to gut it out because you needed him to go. You really were hoping he was going seven. Your, yeah. your bullpen needed him to go seven. 
these extra inning games that we're having, they need to stop. <laughs> Mm -hmm. because we just don't currently have the depth to keep doing these extra inning games. As you can see, day after day, we are making shitty selection after city selection, including today where we are calling up Darren McCacken. was up with the Mariners uh, two years ago, I think, for a brief time, and he'll be up for a brief time again because we'll need another roster arm. <laughs> And yeah, he'll get DFA'd. Don't worry about it, guys. So, but I know there's probably a bunch of people mad that the guy that got DFA'd, Brandon Bernardino, I'm sure everybody's really upset about that one. I, hey, everyone's got fans. I don't know who his fans are, but everyone's got a fan. Whatever, Brandon Bernardino. He was the, he was a kid that came out of independent ball, I think, and then we just picked him up. He's a yeah. live arm lefty, I think, and yeah, he's hasn't done anything special so Luis Castillo he had a pretty good game but you know we ended up losing that game in 10 innings but the reason it got to 10 innings is because uh, your boy because my boy Jared Kellenick way to go Jared high five Get the monster shot that dude Jared is he's a stud he's uh he's been he's right there with Suarez is the top two guys leading the charge here Hard hit rate is something like 63%. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything he's hitting is hard. He's not chasing. Uh, he's striking out, but that's always going to happen. There's going to be some swing and miss with his game. But did draw a couple walks yesterday, so kind of balances out a little bit. He's got an OPS of 1050 or something like that. Yeah, he's been really solid. Plays solid defense. Runs the bases well. You know, this is a nice outfield for the future of the Seattle Mariners with Julio and Kellenick. And who's going to be a third piece? Uh, you know, I'm hoping that Teoscar Hernandez is going to start to figure this out. He had that one breakout game, but other than that, it's just been a woeful. Him and Colton Wong has been like 12 games to forget. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least Teoscar had one game. Colton mm -hmm. Wong has done nothing outside of draw a couple walks. I think he got beaten once, and he's got like three hits. It's been really dreadful. And his defense isn't even all that special. I've seen several... Balls go off his glove. And, I'm actually kind of hoping that uh, Dylan Moore is actually going to be activated when they get back home or shortly after they get back home because I think you could see they, for some reason, not really wanted to give Haggerty much run. He's Boss not hard. much of a hitter. But neither at the moment, neither is Colton Wong. Colton Wong has a better track record than Sam Haggerty does. Do you think Sam Haggerty is just going to suddenly start hitting? I think he gives you chances. Is, isn't this going to be great? No. And you're I, looking at the downside. I'm looking at the upside. Colton Wong is a better hitter than Sam Haggerty has ever been. And he's supposedly a better defender, too. So why are you taking the worst choice, the guy who doesn't play that well? Sam Haggerty is a bench guy. He's there for his ability to run, not for his ability to do anything else. He carries a lot of gloves, but he's not a great glove anywhere so he can run and he's a switch hitter so he can you know maybe you play the percentage but whatever is like you don't play him in front of colton wong that seems uh, silly but i mean the good news is is that we really hoping that it's just tommy lacella that goes away here once they get back because lacella is getting no run at all that's probably the one to go which is just fine because you know he costs nothing he was the the extra guy that you carry around because he's cheap and free. But unfortunately, you know, he's still, you kind of needed him in the first place, which ugh, no one likes that. Now the third game or this, uh, this last game, yesterday's game, do you even want to talk about it? Cause that, I mean, we'll talk about well, the first we, two innings. How about that? It, Seven runs in the first two innings for the Mariners. We did over the Kirby start. Kirby did bounce back. Oh. Uh, the first game of the Cubs series, right? Kirby pitch? No. No, that was Castillo. Oh, Castillo. Never mind. Oh, so Kirby was Sunday? Kirby, Kirby had was... a good second start. He kind of bounced back. Yeah, the, the second game, we, we don't really need too much talk about. The offense was, was great, came out, and pounded the ball everywhere against a nothing starter. And then it turned out we had a nothing starter. <laughs> also, on the one time, we were like, okay, you're up 7 nothing. Flick Chris Flexen, just give me 5. Give me 5, 6. It's like, and, no problem, man. I'll pitch to contact. Yeah. I mean, I was at the bowling alley, and I was watching 7-0. Seven, seven I'm like, yes, this is great. And then 10 minutes later, oh, it's 8-7. 
I turn the game on and it was seven nothing, and then I look up and it's seven one, and then I'm sitting here at my computer watching the game, and then I see bases loaded and I see batting practice fastball in the middle of the plate, and I see it just <laughs> demolish it, and I'm like, yep, yep, that's uh huh, and then the bullpen came in and they couldn't do anything, and it's just. Yeah, the the oh bullpen that was at the moment has has really no shot unless you're Brash or Seawald. Even Brash, it, he did have the blown save in Cleveland, and then he let the run come in another game in Cleveland and extras. I hate the Manfred man, the extra runner and yeah, in oh God, extra innings. I, know. I still hate it. Unfortunately, not at all it's shocked not going that, away. Nope. I wish they would do it at starting the twelfth inning instead of the tenth. They don't care to negotiate with you. Mm-hmm. They're going to do what they're going to do because these are the big brain people that think they know better than you, stupid Mm. fan. Mm. These fans, they just get in the way of progress, right? Am I right, rich people? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Outside of Seawald and Brash, there's just, there's nothing in the bullpen right now. Dio Castillo has been trash, and then it's just the roster turn of everybody else It's been Trevor got and Gabe Spire's actually been pretty decent but those aren't guys that you want in high leverage situations are you missing Eric Swanson no not really I mean I don't know what he's done in Toronto it's five and a third last time I checked it was like five and a third and he was fine I mean, it's nothing special yeah but he I also mean, hasn't been used much so yeah I, I'm am I missing Eric Swanson no I am glad to have Teo Hernandez, that I, I wouldn't even reconsider on doing that trade. Okay. So, no, I'm not missing Eric Swanson. Uh, it's a tough... You have injuries, right? Mm-hmm. And it's April. They're 4-8. and eight. You know, had they not lost the game in Cleveland when we tried to win and win and win, and our bullpen had it, we would have been 5-5. Five and five. Then, you, I mean, you lose these two, so instead you blow the game in Cleveland, go to 4-6, and six, and then you come out and get walked off, and then you just get pummeled. It's um, been a bit deflating, these last handful of games. You know, we went into Cleveland, got off to a decent start. Even our home series, we kind of, it was a bit deflating. And so we need to see some offense. We need to see some quality pitching. We need to get on a decent run here. Put up, like, you know, 15 wins out of 20 games or something like that. It would be really nice to just feel positive about the season, you know, Maybe catch up to the Rays a little bit or something. <laughs> the Rays that are never going to lose. 162-0. Who knew? I mean, the Rays are just absolutely pummeling everybody. Their offense Their right offense, now. like, one through nine is ridiculous. It That's is. That's the problem with the Mariners offense is it's four people. I'd say five. I'd add Jared to the group now. I mean, Julio's been in a slump. Yeah. Right? But Julio's been, was good before that. Suarez was good. France is good. Cal Raleigh's good. And Jared has been on a tear. That's, yeah. that's a big five. It's just that we have a tale of two lineups here. We have the top half and we have the bottom half. And the bottom half is just ass horrible <laughs> because there is, there's not enough pop in their bats. And also, if you're going to do the Cleveland thing of not actually hit home runs, then you have to, to actually still... actually get on base. Yeah, you still need to make have really good at-bats. Uh, if you're going to hit singles, then do that. But you just got to do it at a decent rate. Yeah, and like, no one should is... be afraid of Stephen Kwan, except that you're really afraid of him getting a base hit with a guy on second base because he's going to drive in that runner. And But he's just a singles hitter. Whoa, gee, it's like... Put guys on base that can run in front of them, and yeah, you'll be well, okay. Well, you know, Just everybody after Quan had that five RBI game, they're like, "Oh, I kill for to have Stephen Quan." Not really. I, I Stephen Quan did really nothing else. I mean, he had a really mediocre. If he got a, a bloop double that hit the foul line for two runs, and then he was... He puts the ball in play. This is a thing... Okay, so three true outcomes. Hey, folks, do you like three true outcomes? Well, Stephen Kwan is the anti-three true outcome. That is what contact does to you. That's what we would love out of J.P. Crawford. That's what we would love out of Colton Wong right now. The problem with Stephen Kwan is that he plays left field. It's not his offensive game. I would love to have Stephen Kwan on the team as a second baseman. Or shortstop. Or a shortstop but not as a left fielder. 
that's the essence. That's the problem. Because you get a guy like you put Stephen Kwan as your nine hitter. He's going to clean up anyone at your if your six, seven, eight hitters are on base. He'll clean them up in scoring position because he'll and then he's going to probably get on base too, and that's and that's great. And then he's on base for your Julio's and your Kellenics yeah. and your Suarez and your Cal Raleigh's. You're, I don't know. I don't want him as the top. I don't want him as a leadoff hitter. Not really. He's they've got basically the same hitter in Miles Straw and Stephen Kwan hitting back to back. Miles Straw gets mm-hmm. on base because he's speedy, right? So he puts the ball on the ground and it's like you better be on point and moving fast because Miles Straw will beat out those hits. Mm-hmm. And then he steals. He's very good at stealing. He's very fast. He's never going to hit. So this is this is how you build a lineup. You put your catcher as your eight hitter because he's slow and he's probably going to strike out a whole bunch, right? But then you put Miles Straw as your nine hitter. Now the reason Miles Straw is your nine hitter is because he's fast. Is because he can he can uh, um, if he gets on base or if he hits, he doesn't hit for any power, so he's not really driving anybody in. But he can get on base and he can steal all over the place, right? And so if he could take a walk, then suddenly he's on second base, and then you have Stephen Kwan up. And oh uh, shit, Stephen Kwan's gonna get a single, and then but Straw yeah, no comes around and scores. Throwing Straw out because he's and, so fast. And then after him, you have Jose Ramirez. You know what this lineup reminds me of? The early Cleveland lineup, so or at least the top of the lineup with uh, Vizquel and Alomar, Alomar and, and Kenny Lofton, and that those three. That's what you, they have. And Ramirez, Jimenez, uh, Ahmed Rosario sucks as well. He can't hit. He's Got off to a real bad start this year, anyway. His but, swings uh, don't even look good. Yeah, does Cleveland? Where is Cleveland going to get the Manny Ramirez and the Jim Tomes? Uh, they don't have those guys, and Josh Bell ain't that. So uh, I'm, Josh Naylor's not that either. So I, I don't, I don't know where they're getting the pop. They got the other. They got his brother or whatever, Bo Naylor. Uh, yeah, he's not even playing. <laughs> back home in Seattle, we got uh, what? Nine games in a row back home in Seattle. We got Colorado, Milwaukee, bottom feeder, St. Louis. Yeah, bottom feeder is because they're having the same problems as the Mariners, pitching, right? They've they've got offense. Their whole problem has been pitching. Well, maybe they want Colton Wong back. <laughs> maybe they'll give us that Jordan Walker guy. Uh, yeah, he's okay. Uh, any other thoughts on the, on the team? No, the, looking forward to possibly getting home with nine games, and I think those are some winnable games. I'm hoping, like I said, that Dylan Moore comes off because I think maybe getting him in there on some of these days instead of Colton Wong would be a help, and he, even giving J.P. Crawford some days off could be some help. I would hope in these next nine games, they said the Munoz injury wasn't serious, that it was going to be the... Well, they retroactively put him on the injured list, so... That means they're really just trying to get him some time off. He had a, an abbreviated spring as well with the WBC mm-hmm. so, and injuries. Yeah, he was a little slow out of the gate. The surgery had in the off season. Yeah, you know, getting Munoz back, hoping to kind of get everything back in line. Just need to get some starters, get some innings here outside of Luis Castillo. Hopefully, Gilbert bounces back today. Rocking my Gilbert jersey, so mm-hmm. hopefully we uh, leave Chicago on a better note. Win two home. series in a row. That would be a nice, at least, you know, be happy about something. But how can you win two series in a row? We, we lost the first two. Oh, well, <laughs> damn. <laughs> we should have won the first one. That that That's the one we, sh- we missed on the, with the Kelnick Homer, and then we lost in extras. And then Flexen taking a big dump yesterday. So essentially, we probably should be going for the sweep today, but instead we're hoping to get one out of three. In my timeline, in the best <laughs> timeline. The only timeline that matters. Yeah. I just choose my own reality. Isn't that what we're doing nowadays? So I don't know what we're going to see. I mean, perennial punching bag Colorado is probably going to kick our ass. And then you got Milwaukee. They're leading the Central, right? Aren't they... Yeah, and Jesse Winker, don't be fooled by Jesse Winker. He's had two plate appearances against left-handers so far this year, and currently he's day-to-day with an illness. Um, At least that's what the coach said. But he's had 30 plate appearances, like 33 plate appearances, two of them versus left-handers, and he has all of two doubles. So he's empty average at the moment. He's still slow. 
he's had elite plate discipline, but he can't do anything when he hits the ball. And he only does it against right-handers at this point. So he's a platoon corner outfielder. He's a platoon DH. DH, really. He's not really an outfielder. Yeah, no. You don't want him in the outfield. No, he's a platoon DH and uh, with no pop. He's a lesser version of Andrew Benintendi. So on that, I guess, let's just hope that the next nine games, that we see some better baseball. Just better overall baseball Mm -hmm. is what I'm looking forward to. Let's get back to the Mariners that... There were Mariners last year. The, the way they had the team set up to is pitching and defense, and we added some offense, hopefully to get some more complete offense over the next nine games. Hopefully we may get a little healthy. Well, we need the bullpen to be healthy. We need the defense to stop making mistakes. We've seen a lot of amateur mistakes out of that defense so far this year, and we need to make the plays that are in front of us. When you do that, you're going to give yourself a decent chance to win. All right, well, last game of the series with the Cubs is coming up, and we will have that for you next week. Next week. On the Great Villain Podcast. Hit the like button, subscribe, and go Mariners. Go Mariners. We're out.